Hello, my dear students of class 7, and welcome to this tutoring from the Directorate of School Education, Nagaland. This is your tutor, Atsinyo Sekose, and today we have a very interesting topic from a poetry section that is titled The Shed by Frank Flynn. You will find it on page 48. Page 48. So while you are locating your page, let me point out very quickly that for any kind of reading activities or for comprehension, which means if you are reading to understand it, always take a good look at the topic because the topic always gives us the clue as to how or what we are going to find when we are reading. So. When we look at the topic here, you will find that the word shed, I'm sure this is not a new word for you, but for, uh, for the sake of others who may not know, let's understand it in this way. A shed is a place, all right? Or we usually refer to it as a storehouse, okay? So in a shed, we usually keep our animals, for instance, cow shed, or we can say if we keep our tools there, we can say tools, uh, if we keep our tools, we can say tool shed. And uh, for instance, you can also say if you uh, store all those kinds of uh, things, old junks, let's say, then you can also say that that is the storehouse. So a shed is such kind of a place and usually we keep it a little separate from our house, okay? But in many cases, sometimes we find a small shed uh, just nearby our house and we store things there. So that is a shed. So that is what we are going to talk about here. And when I put it in that way, maybe some of you are wondering or thinking about your own shed. And maybe some of you are afraid to go there because you find so many odd things there or maybe it looks scary. So we are also going to find out about a person here who is also afraid to go and look into the shed here. Now, uh, before we, I read it out, or we read, let's first find out what these words are. So the first one we have here is at the bottom, which means the shed is somewhere at the end or the lower area of a garden, all right? Then hinges, when we say hinges, I'm sure you have seen it. Hinges are those metal that can bend and that helps the door swing. So even our fingers are hinges, you know, because we can bend it. So that is hinges. And when we say creak, which means making a squeaky, high-pitched sound, that is creaking. You know, when uh, things are quick, old, and rusty, it makes such kind of noise. So that is the sound. Then staring, I'm sure everyone is familiar with this, but when we say staring, looking at something without blinking, staring, that is staring, all right? And then ghost, we all know that that is a spirit. Floorboards here is referring to wooden planks. When we say wooden planks or the floor of the shed here, okay? Now, the next word or phrase here is chop off. When we say chop off, we can understand it as cut off. Then number eight, den. Uh, then here, in our poem here, it is referring to a hideout, a secret place where you can hide. So that is then. Now, let's take a look at the poem here, and I will be reading it out. I hope you would be looking down into your text and follow me. So the shed, written by Frank Flynn. There's a shed at the bottom of a garden with a spider's web hanging across the door. The hinges are rusty and creak in the wind. When I'm in bed, I lie and I listen. I'll open that door one day. There's a dusty old window around at the side with three cracked panes of glass. I often think there's someone staring at me each time that I pass. I'll peep through that window one day. My brother says there's a ghost in the shed who hides under the rotten floorboards. And if I ever dare to set food inside, he'll jump out and chop off my head. But I'll take a peek one day. I know that there isn't really a ghost. My brother tells lies to keep the shed for his den. There isn't anyone staring or making strange noises. And the spider has been gone from his web since I don't know when. I'll go into that shed one day soon, 
but not just yet. So in a very clever way, he put it in that way, or our speaker here, but not just yet. We will be talking more about it in detail. For now, let's take a look at our first stanza here. And uh, in our first stanza, we find that the poet or the speaker is describing a shed in his house. There's a shed at the bottom of our garden. So like I said, this shed is located somewhere at the end of the garden with a spider's web hanging across the door. So it must be a very old shed where uh, people did not visit it that often and it has got spider's web hanging across the door. The hinges are rusty and creak in the wind. And here is the description of the door here. The door, what, what happened to the door is that because it is very old, the hinges, we have already learned what are hinges, so the hinges are rusty and very old and it creaks. Whenever the wind blows, it makes such a high pitch, squeaky, strange noise. When I'm in bed, I lie and I listen. So the speaker here says that whenever I'm in bed, I try to listen to that noise coming from the shed. And he would think to himself or herself, let's say, that one fine day, I'll open that door one day. So here we learned that our speaker is a very curious person. When we say curious, a person who always wants to find out things, all right? So he's a very curious person and he really wants to go into that shed and find out what is there in that shed. In our next stanza, that is second stanza, here it says, there's a dusty old window around at the side with three cracked panes of glass. So from here, we can understand that our speaker at some point of time must have gone outside that shed and take a look into that shed. So here he finds that when he, whenever he peeped inside, he finds that there is a very old, dusty window, a window that is covered with dust around at the side, at the side of the shed with three cracked panes of glass. So he can uh, see that there are, the window glass is also cracked in three places. I often think there's someone staring at me. And whenever he goes uh, nearby that shed or whenever he peeped into the shed, he always have this or imagine or feel that someone is staring at him without blinking, maybe in a very serious manner. So that is what he thinks. Each time that I pass, every time he goes through that shed, he would always have that feeling. I'll peep through that window one day. So in order to make sure, he is saying that one fine day, I'm going to take a good look at that shed. Now, the next stanza, my brother says there's a ghost in the shed. Now, we learned that uh, the speaker has a brother. And what does the brother say? The brother said that or warned him that there's a ghost, a spirit in the shed. And he also says that who hides under the rotten floorboards. Where is this ghost hiding? This ghost is hiding under the floorboards, that is under the wooden floor. Now, so that's what the brother has warned him. And if I ever dare to set foot inside, I here is referring to our speaker here, and uh, the brother pointed out pointed out or warned him that if you ever go inside that um, shed, he'll jump out. He here is referring to the ghost. The ghost will jump out and cut your head off. That sounds very nasty, don't you think? And very scary as well. But I'll take a peek one day. So like I said, our speaker is a very curious person. Even though the brother warned him in that way, he is telling himself that one fine day, I'm going to go and find out whether there is really a ghost or not, whether what is behind that house or uh, what is in that house that is making all those strange noises. So he is telling himself in that way. Now. Our next stanza, I know that there isn't really a ghost. So the speaker is telling himself that I know that there is no such thing as ghost in that shed. My brother tells lies to keep the shed for his den. And he thinks that his brother or her brother, let's say, is uh, telling lies so that he can keep the shed all to himself as 
uh, his own hideout, his own secret hideout. There isn't anyone staring or making strange noises. And he goes on and say that there is no such thing as ghost and there is nothing in that shed that is making sounds or strange noises in there. And the spider has been gone from his web. And he also noticed from the outside that the spider is also gone from the web. Since I don't know when, and he does not remember exactly when that happened, I'll go into that shed one day soon. And he reminded himself that one fine day, I'm going to go into that shed and find out what is really behind or what is really inside that shed. And the last line is very interesting because it says here, but not just yet. So uh, here it tells us that the speaker is not ready uh, just yet to go and find out what is in there, which also tells us that maybe he is trying to muster up all his courage or uh, be, when he is brave enough for that matter, when he is grown up enough, maybe he wants to go and find out. But we learned that he is very curious. So that is our poem there and it is written by Frank Flynn. And uh, to put it very short, we have here a speaker who is very curious, who wants to go inside the shed and find out what is in there, but he is afraid because the brother warned him that there is a ghost and he's afraid because of all the strange noises that he imagines or he hears coming from that shed. And that's why he told himself that one fine day when I'm old enough, when I muster up enough courage, I will go into that shed and once and for all find out what is really in there. So that is our poem there. Now, uh, we are going to take a look at some of our exercises here. So you may want to look down into um, question number one, working with a poem. That is the first question, that is, answer the following question. Now, question number one here is, who is the speaker in the poem? And uh, the speaker here in the poem here is probably a he, all right, or probably the poet himself when he was young, that is Frank Flynn, or uh, who is to say what is what and which is which? A very famous line from Alice in Wonderland sent, uh, said by Lewis Carroll. You know, we never know. Even the poet may be referring to a little girl here or maybe a little boy. So whether your answer is a he or a she, it would be correct, both, all right? So you can uh, put it in that way. Number two here is, is she or he afraid or curious or both? What do you think? Do you think he's afraid or curious? I'm sure you will be able to figure out the answer for yourself. But as we learned, we find that the speaker is both curious, at the same time a little afraid because the brother warned him of ghosts and so on. So that's why he's saying that uh, when I'm old enough, I will go and visit that shed. So uh, again, that's your answer. You can say both. Number three here is, what is she or he planning to do soon? What was he planning? He's planning that when he is old enough, he would go into that shed and find out what's in there and also find out whether there really exists a ghost or not. So that was his plan. The fourth one here, but not just yet, suggest doubt, fear, hesitation, laziness or something else. Now let's think about this, this line, but not just yet. That is in our last line in our poem there. And what does it imply? What does it say here? Do you think the, the speaker is afraid? Do you think the speaker is hesitating? All right. Or do you think the speaker is a lazy person? No. Now, if we think about it, I don't think he is a lazy person, right? So we can rule that out. So let's take a look at the other options, that is doubt, fear, or hesitation. I think you would also come to the right conclusion that he is hesitating. Why? Because he did not really enter the shed. Why? Because he's waiting to be grown up or to become brave enough to do so. So there is a little bit of fear as well, so you can put those two answers into your answers. Now, um, question number two here, I'll read it out once. Is there a room in your house or a house in your neighborhood or locality where you would rather not go alone and never 
at night. If there is such a place and a story to go with it, let others hear all about it. So uh, here, this is a very interesting question. You know, what you can do is, you can also, I'm sure you, you have a certain place where you are afraid to go alone or especially at night, you know, it can be the bathroom, it can also be a storehouse, like I said, or maybe a shed nearby your uh, house. And if there is such a place, what you can do is uh, tell a story about it. And let me tell you that it need not necessarily be the same story that we have here. It can be your own story and why you are afraid to go there. You can tell your friends or in fact, you can also tell your families. And if you want to make it more interesting, what you can do is, it does not matter whether you are able to say this story in English or not, you can try it in your own uh, mother tongue, in your own language. You know, when you do that, you would be able to uh, also understand our poem here better. Now, here is also another activity. Remember, in our previous class, we learned about comic stories, right? So what you can do is, you can also try uh, a comic story of this poem here. What you can do is, remember, if you look back into your pages, you will find that we have that comic story with strips and boxes and captions, callouts and bubbles and so on. We know when we use those, when we say captions, when we put words in a caption, which means the direct speech. So you can convert it the conversation or the talking of the speaker here into that manner. You can also put the brother, what the, did the brother say? The brother said there is a ghost, right? And that it will come out and chop off his hat. So those things, you can put it in the caption and draw pictures, write a story about it. And when you do that, you will be able to understand this poem better and also enjoy it. So that's what we have here in our lesson. I hope you will take some time to read it again and enjoy it and work out your exercises and um, try that comic strip as well. Try that uh, storytelling to your families. And on that note, we would be winding up today's class. Thank you all very much for joining me.